Was it a matter of chance in 1970 that large hills and dirt attracted a motocross rider who happened to be a young entrepreneur with a tendency to take things too far? While the neighborhood kids riding their stingrays wanted to ride like him, is it a coincidence that this is where early BMX races started? We were just trying to look at motorcycles and trying to, you know, make fenders and do crossbars, trying to make our bike look more like a motorcycle. Wow, there's like all these kids that are doing what we've been doing. We didn't know what we were doing. Putting plywood up on a wheelbarrow to see who could go the farthest and stuff like that. But once the word got out, all these kids, you know, were doing it all around the world, just gravitated into this new thing. When we actually did a downhill track, I mean, that's where the speed started picking up, bigger jumps. We really felt like we were motorcycle guys because we're going a lot faster, jumping a lot higher. Back then, the BMX bike technology was non-existent. Trust me, there were many bikes at the side of the tracks that were broken in half. We would go into a town, and then we went out and dominated the races. It wasn't, hey, how'd you do? It was, how far did you win by? I think it was a little bit more ruthless. If you had a problem with somebody, you know, I'd take them out. That made us the bad boys of BMX, and we definitely were the bad boys of BMX. We kicked ass everywhere we went. When I was a kid, I didn't get a lot of support for riding a BMX bike. Because in the 70s, riding a BMX bike, and you're 17, 18 years old, everybody looks at you like you're pretty weird. As things evolved and the sport took off, then they stopped giving me grief. We would do a show wherever we could. First tour, people didn't know what was really going on. People would just look at us, they wouldn't know when to clap, they wouldn't know what we were doing, or that you were even supposed to do that on bikes. If everybody do a trick and they go, like, here it is. Everybody had their own little image, you know, so the heavy metal team it did look like Lee Snyder from Twisted Sister. The kids were like, what? What's this guy doing? I thought this was a bike show. We come out of there just full on metal machine, you know? Whatever it was, just anything was possible. You could do anything. And just because you didn't know how to do it didn't mean that you could do it. There became a point where the top five or 10 amateurs were better than half the pros. And a few of those amateurs were probably better than all the pros. I couldn't keep up with it. I was like, oh man, I already feel old. I'm almost 18. I failed miserably at a lot of things. I also had a lot of success. And it should have been him. He should have been the biggest that there was. Matt Hoffman believed in the thing when it was dead and laying on the ground. It was really the highlight of my life. None of us really knew what we were doing, but this is what has to happen. This is the mission, it's on. It was like everybody come together, feed off of each other's tricks. You might leave with a few hundred bucks. Most likely you'd leave with a story to tell and a concussion. Yeah, let's live today. He didn't just market it like some guy with a pen and a paper and a camera or something. He got in there and died for the sport. And if it killed me, I just wanted to show the world what it was about. It's the people in BMX, it was the tenacious attitude that I learned from getting knocked down and getting up and beating your ass that saved my life. What kids are doing at 15 years old now is unheard of when I was 15. Stuff is insane. Kids are throwing big stuff every single day. You know, I was just Joe kid on a stingray.